Hi, my name is Laura Jones, and today I'd like to demonstrate some of the concepts that I explain in my article on Perkins Paths to Technology called iOS Devices and Focus Braille Displays. First, I'd like to give you a tour of the Focus. I have a Focus 14 laying in front of me on the table. If I turn it, the left panel has the a black power button as the bottom button facing closest to you on the left side. Past that, away from you, is a micro USB jack to be used for charging and for connecting to computers. When I lay the focus back down, I see that on the top I have traditional six key entry and a space bar where my thumbs rest. I also have a dot seven where my left hand pinky lays and a dot eight where my right hand pinky goes. Below that, I have the braille cells in the center with cursor router buttons above each cell. If I need to move my cursor to that cell, I just hit the button above the cell. To the left and the right of the braille, I have two circle shaped buttons. Those are mode buttons. Below the circle shaped buttons are nav rockers. Now if I turn my focus upward so that you can see it, I'm working on the front panel that faces you while the focus is laying on the table. If I'm moving from the outside in on the Focus 14, I find a selector button that is shaped like a concave circle. Then I find a rocker bar. Then as I continue to move inward, I find my panning button, which has an arrow shape on it. And on the center, I find my shift keys. On a Focus 40, these will be in a different order to help with panning efficiency. The panning button is on the far outside, then the rocker bar, then the selector button, and then the shift button as you move inward. Now I would like to demonstrate how the focus interacts with the iPad. First of all, I'm going to turn the focus on by holding the power button on the left side for three seconds. I will know it's on when Braille pops up. While the focus is not paired, it will say focus 14 on the front, and then if I pan on my 14, it will give me my battery charge. On the 40, you don't have to pan. The battery charge will already show up in the middle. So now that I've turned my focus on, I'm going to unlock my iPad. Now that I've unlocked my iPad, I can show you how the focus interacts with it. Now, of course, when you have, I have voiceover on with iOS, you can use gestures to perform what you want. So if I swipe right, it's going to move to my next items. If I swipe left, it's going to move to my previous items. If you are using vision while you're looking at your iPad, you can see that there is a black square around whatever voiceover is focused on at that time. Now I can perform those same tasks with certain buttons on the focus. So I can do a single finger swipe left or right with my right nav rocker. It's very important you realize it's the right nav rocker. This is one of the first buttons that I teach my students with the iPad. I can also double tap with either one of my mode buttons. I just push it once and it acts as a double tap. My left nav rocker acts as a single finger flick up or down. So on my home page that's going to offer for me to rearrange apps. If I was editing a document, it would let me move through my whatever my rotor setting was set as. So if I had it set as lines and I pushed up and down on my left nav rocker, it would let me move by lines. Here's a demonstration of what it does on the home page. And I don't want to arrange apps, so I'm going to move away from that. On the rocker bars on the front panel of my focus act as three finger flicks. So if I use the right rocker bar, it acts as a three finger flick to go to the next page if I go down. And a three finger flick to go to the previous page if I push up on it. 
Let me demonstrate what the left rocker bar does for you. It lets you move up or down pages. Sometimes when we're on the iPad, there is no page to move up or down. But a good example of a place that you can move up and down pages is in the settings menu. So if I push down on it, it's going to jump me down further. If I push up on my rocker bar, it will jump me up further. Just to compare, as I mentioned, you can move by gestures. You can also move with your specific buttons on your focus. Or on all Braille displays, you can use the same commands or Braille chords. So dot five in space will move me to my next item. Dot two in space, for example, will move me to my previous item. If we compare that, I needed to use two hands and a space bar to be able to move efficiently through my items, whereas if I'm just using the nav rocker on the focus, all I need to do is use one finger. That's why sometimes using the dedicated buttons on the focus for actions on the iPad can be helpful. Now I would like to demonstrate how Braille translation works in a word processor so you better understand. I have the Pages Up app on, up on my iPad. So when I Braille a word and I'm still in the middle of Brailling it, it will pop up on my Braille display with a full cell. Right now I have a full cell, a capital dot, a W, and an E. This full cell at the beginning and end of my display is just telling me that I'm currently in the middle of writing that word. I can backspace right now with a dot seven and a space if I want to make a correction. And when I'm ready for it to translate the word, I just hit space. Once I hit space, it will translate the word onto the screen and announce it. So as you can see, I went back and fixed a mistake. I went ahead and deleted the whole word. If I go back and make a correction in the middle of a word once it's translated, it may insert a contraction incorrectly. So it's a good idea to minimize frustration if you've already had it translate a word to go back and actually backspace through the entire word. Um, just to give you another quick demonstration, I can do new line with dot eight and space. And so now I'm on to my next line. Now, uh, something that often comes up with students becoming frustrated is they accidentally start brailing something. They just inadvertently hit a dot and they don't realize it. And now my iPad won't take my commands. It's not doing what I want it to. Why is it not working? Well, it's not working because it thinks it's translating a word right now. And it, so I always have my students as the first thing, if their focus is not doing what they think it should be doing, they double check whether there are full cells at the bottom. If there are, you just hit space to have it realize that you're no longer writing a word. Now it's ready to take my commands and my buttons the way I would normally expect for it to. And that gives you a quick that gives you a quick summary of how the focus can interact with the iPad. Please read the article to hear even more ideas about how to use it effectively.